In today's bonus episode, we're gonna learn about the 10 tools every mechanic working on a car restoration project needs in their garage. Join in. Thanks for joining us at Extra Good for our car restoration adventures. If you're just starting out in the garage, you may have no idea where to start, and it all starts with tools. What tools do you need to work on car projects? Today, I'm gonna to break down a driving line article, seven mechanics tools that everybody needs in their garage, and add a few bonus ones of my own, and just take you through some of the how to use them, what they are, how do you decide which one to buy, to give you some extra information as you head to the tool store to get started on your project. So, without much further ado, uh, let's begin. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite tool is in the garage. So, uh, Benjamin, very first thing, uh, of course, as obvious, it doesn't need to be included in his story um, as one of the seven, but his first thing is a basic mechanics toolkit. Um, I have a number of these. I started with this little kit, which is actually really handy because uh, I have old cars that you basically should always have tools in your trunk. And this actually makes a really good size to throw in my car. Uh, and actually I keep it there now. But when I started out, it was the first that, that I had. Um, and really recommend if you're starting out on project cars that you don't buy tools just piecemeal, you just buy a big set. Um, this one is good. It's got all the basic stuff. Some wrenches and sockets in both SEA and metric sizes. Um, but if you can spring for it, I would really recommend something larger. So uh, this is an awesome gear wrench set that I just got. Uh, it comes in a handy little toolbox that you can take with you. And it's kind of like the, the big daddy's version of this guy. So uh, we've got <clears throat> ratchets and sockets in quarter inch, half inch, and three eighths inch. Um, which is great, along with all of the extensions that go with them. Uh, then it's got these handy little drawers. You've got box and wrenches, sockets, and deep sockets, as well as some uh, bolt runners and screwdriver sets. Um, so really, all of the everyday general um, tools come in this, and uh, this is, again, this is a gear wrench set. Um, over the holidays, it was on sale on Amazon for like $2.50 or something like that, whereas some of those more basic sets you can get for $50, $60, $100, um, but a great investment. Go ahead and get something nice because you're gonna be using those tools a heck of a lot. All right, so, but getting to Benjamin's first thing in seven mechanics tools that every, that should be in every project car garage, uh, number one for him is torque wrench. And I totally agree, a torque wrench is a necessary must have if you're doing any project car uh, working on. I've got two examples in my garage um, we've got the big boy one, which is uh, the twist type, and if you guys have ever used one of these, you know there's markings on here to how many foot pounds you need, so you just twist it up until you see, and there's even numbers around here so you can get really, really even. This one, um, goes from 30 to 250 and we use these ones to uh, you know do tire lug nuts and things that need more more uh, more weight then if I'm doing something finer um, some of the engine work and things like that uh, where it's less pounds I use this great electric one um, electric ones are great they are nice and exact but again you have to make sure that they have batteries and uh, they do need to be checked for um, reliability um, and 
exact precision uh, every so often, depending on how much you use it. So actually, right now I'm out of batteries. So uh, that's one drawback, but I actually really love this, this particular um, gear wrench, electric torque wrench. Um, so everything, every bolt has a spec. Don't just take an air tool and hammer on your bolt until it can't budge anymore. You can really wreck a lot of stuff that way, of course. Um, so especially if you're doing fine work, you want to know what the correct spec setting is on that, and you're going to need a torque wrench to do that. All right, next up on Benjamin Hunting's article, seven tools that everybody with project car needs. Uh, number two is impact driver. Again, totally couldn't agree more. Uh, if you're doing a lot of work in the garage, you need to have an impact driver. I have a few different ones that I use a lot. Um, the number one easiest one is this little one from Snap-on. Um, this is my husband, the mechanics tool. Uh, I did not spring for this one. It was just me working on my project cars. Um, the first um, air, air driver, impact driver that I got was a CP uh, ear tool version. So of course you need an air compressor for that, which is something that wasn't on Benjamin the Huntington's article. And again, if you're going to be using air tools, which generally um, if you don't want to go electric, which I just don't want those electric cords around, um, there's a lot of choices in air tools. Obviously, battery powered stuff is rad, uh, but it's a little bit more expensive and you have to think about getting spare batteries and everything like that because you don't want to be left high and dry in the middle of your project. So, um, this snap-on tool is awesome. Um, also, if you're doing Big Daddy stuff, this larger version, a half inch snap on tool, is awesome. Um, we were just splitting apart the front end of our 66 F100. And again, if you work on older cars, more than not old cars, you know how much you get stuck with sticky bolts. Um, it's just all the time, right? Those bolts might have been there for 50 plus years. So, um, having this big boy there to provide a little bit extra torque when you encounter that stuff is nice to have when you need it. Though again, if you're just a hobbyist, this is a pretty hefty investment of dollars. One other thing on Benjamin's article, seven tools every, uh, mechanics tools every project car garage should have was, jumping ahead a couple of, of things, was a propane torch. I actually don't have a propane torch in my garage. I should. Um, it's a really great tool to get to those unstuck bolts. This is generally what I find works for me, um, but a propane or a butane torch is way cheaper <laughs> than that snap-on heavy-duty uh, impact driver. And um, it's really useful if you're trying to take apart a stuck bolt. So you just heat it up with the propane um, until it's nice and glowy and then let it cool down and it actually makes the metal <clears throat> expand and then contract and it gives you usually uh, what you need to get that bolt end stuck. So um, that would be tool number three, propane torch. Uh, one other thing that wasn't on this list but um, is super necessary and maybe it was overlooked because a lot of people just have this for their home and that's just a drill. Um, we use the drill all the time and you need it in the garage for a number of things, one of which is up next on this list and that is a extractor set. Um, bolt extractors and grips. So um, an extractor set comes in handy if you snap a bolt head off. It happens to all of us, uh, especially, again, especially on older cars. And uh, so if a bolt head snaps off and you have the rest of the bolt stuck in whatever metal area that it is, then how do you get it out? Bolt extractors are uh, one of the best ways to do that. Or if rather than it breaking off, it's actually just too stripped to get a, a bite on, um, 
I use vice grips, so you can tighten these down extra good. It's going to ruin the bolt, but oftentimes it gives me uh, the grip that I need to get a handle on it. Uh, again, you have to tighten them down as much as possible. Um, so that's what, that's what I do sometimes. Other people I've heard sometimes will hammer on a socket that's a little bit smaller. Uh, I don't do that, um, but I've heard it's been done. But if that head is snapped off entirely, extractor, what you also need with this is some sort of a center punch and a drill. Um, so you center punch the middle of it, you drill in the middle so you can get this extractor down in there and then it teeths it and you can screw it on out. Along with an extractor, uh, you're also probably gonna want a tap and die set. Uh, tap and die set will let you uh, clean out threads. Uh, it will let you, if you have to drill out, last, last measure is actually drilling out the bolt entirely. Uh, you don't want to have to do that. Um, but if you do and you have to cut new threads, that's what tap and dies come in handy for. Or if you have a raw piece of material and you need to make threads, you've got those parts as well. Um, but what I most commonly use a tap and die set for is actually cleaning out and chasing out the muck and grime um, on old um, bolts and holes. Jack and Jack stands. Uh, that one's pretty obvious. Uh, you can't do a lot of work in the garage without a way to raise your car off the ground. Um, I have a good multi-purpose jack. I don't have any super lowered cars or super high cars. So I don't need a specialty jack, uh, like a low profile one or a high one. If, uh, say for example, I'm working on our pickup truck, sometimes I will use a block of wood in between the jack stand and the car just to make it easier. Um, but the jack stand is a necessary part to have along with a jack. If you haven't worked on cars a lot, maybe you don't know, but you can never get under a car that's only held up by a jack. You must use jack stands. That jack can fail, and if that happens, uh, that's gonna be major injury or death. So uh, always use jack stands. I never get underneath a car that has not been properly um, put on jack stands and <laughs> give it a nice final shake at the end to make sure that uh, it is solid, in fact, you know, when you might be putting some major pressure and leverage on whatever work you're doing uh, underneath, you want to know that it is solid on those jack stands. Uh, so invest in a good pair of those. Make sure that they are, you know, the weight capacity of whatever you're going to be putting them on. Um, while two jack stands is minimal, you should have at least four, because if you want to raise all four tires off of the ground, you're going to need four jack stands. Um, what is next on that article? Scan tool. So this is one of the seven tools that I actually don't have in my garage. Uh, scan tool is great for anybody working on uh, 1996 or newer that has an OBD2 port. Scan tools are really inexpensive and can just help you read and diagnose uh, the codes that are being thrown in engines. Uh, I work on classic cars, so uh, no OBD ports in my garage, but um, again, for my newer cars that are just my daily drivers, I generally take them to a mechanic, or also my husband is a mechanic, and he actually has a super heavy duty uh, snap-on <clears throat> modus unit uh, that can tell him all sorts of stuff. I have heard my husband say that sometimes people who don't know a lot about cars and they buy one of those, you know, marketed towards the everyday person at home uh, diagnostic OBD2 tools, he doesn't actually like them because those people start trying to maybe fix problems or think they know more about what's going on with their car than they actually do know because they just they don't have the knowledge of how all of the workings of a car uh, are and go together and uh, you know when your car is throwing codes and something's wrong with it um, it's helpful to get somebody who is most knowledgeable about cars and go take it to a professional so um, that's his recommendation but again if you're a hobbyist and you're working on cars at home uh, and you have project cars that are newer than 96 
a scan tool is one of those really helpful, helpful things to have in the garage. Um, next item on this list of seven tools every project car garage should have, multimeter and test light. Multimeters, super cheap. I have this, the little one from Harbor Freight I got uh, years ago. Uh, there are some things to know of how to use this directly. I mean, first up, it's got a dial with all sorts of different numbers. Um, and if you don't know anything about electricity and amperage and circuits, uh, there is some underlying knowledge that you need to know. But, I mean, for example, though, just the um, easiest thing is just to check that if the battery is working, you connect black to black, red to red, that should close the circuit. And you're gonna see a number on, um, on the screen. And so is this 12 volt battery actually giving me 12 volts? Uh, yes, it is, in fact. Um, is it giving you less? Checking to see if you know, you're having an electrical component failure of your car. Uh, tracing those down can be a real bear. Uh, my best advice is have one of these, be patient, think through the electrical circuit system, and uh, try to chase down where you're losing power. This little uh, voltage tester light is another thing you can use instead of this, and this just lights up uh, when there is voltage. If you're just looking to see if power is continuing through a circuit, this is helpful, though um, this is just as easy. And that is all of the seven tools in Benjamin Hunty's article that went up on Driving Line last week, seven mechanics tools that should be in every project car garage. I have a couple of additions, that's why I'm actually calling today's Team Nitto at home in my garage is 10 mechanics tools that should be in every project car garage. Um, so we did the tool set, we did um, impact wrenches, we did torque wrenches, um, jack and jack stands, voltmeter, uh, bolt extractor sets. So one of the most obvious things is actually a really good flashlight. Um, this one is awesome. It runs about a hundred bucks, but is so worth it. Uh, it's rechargeable. It's super bright. Um, this is what every mechanic is going to pull out of their pocket the moment they look under the hood. If you can't see what you're working on, then it makes the job a lot easier. Some other really great things. Uh, this is a gear wrench tool that is, again, um, rechargeable and it has a magnet on it, so it's really easy to place it and provide light to just where you're needing. Uh, so, number eight, flashlight. Let me know in the comments what your favorite flashlight is. Um, other thing, this is kind of, maybe this was already considered to be in the mechanic set, though it doesn't come in general mechanic set, and this is the line wrench. So, if you're trying to get off brake lines, uh, something that generally is a very soft bolt, um, and you don't want to strip it by letting a regular wrench slip off of it. These are closed in uh, further, so you kind of go the line, put them down, and they're much better. My last thing is a good respirator. If you are doing body work, if you are sanding rusty bits, there's a gazillion painting, a gazillion things where there's fumes that you don't want to get into your respiratory system. Really take care of your health and safety. Um, <clears throat> this is my favorite. I used to have just the one that went over the nose, um, but this one with the larger face shield is actually amazing and great for quarantine um, because it protects your whole eyes and it's, it gives you larger vision and it feels nicer on your face. So. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, if, if I'm cutting something or whatever, I don't have to worry about something getting into my eyes or my lungs. Um, way recommend this for working in the garage. And uh, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for joining me today with uh, Team Nitto at Home. 
leave a comment, say hi, let me know what tools we missed in this. Again, we are working off of the article that Benjamin Hunting published on DrivingLane.com last week. Uh, seven tools that everybody needs with a project car. And so just going over these basic tools today.